Welcome to the John McAllister Report, where John McAllister, top football evaluator, interviews college and high school coaches and athletes from around the country. Sit back and enjoy today's podcast. Hello, I'm John McAllister with Coach's Corner, and it's a part of the John McAllister Report. Tonight, my guest is coach, head football coach at St. Ignatius High School, Chuck Kyle. Chuck Kyle is beginning his 50th year of coaching, and uh, I'm excited for him. He was a, he's been a head coach for 39 years and an assistant for 11. So I guess he's beginning his 51st year of high school football coaching. St. Ignatius, very successful. He teaches English and he's going to retire from both of those. He's a head track coach and he's going to retire from track. So he's after 50 some 51 years, eventually he will be uh, away from education. He's a very good friend of mine. We've talked a lot. We've talked over the years and as I've said many times, and we'll say again, he was one of the first head football co- high school coaches that actually believed me, believed in me, and uh, listened to me, and I really, really respected that. So, for sit back and enjoy my interview with Coach Chuck Kyle, Saint Ignatius High School. Coach Kyle, Coach Chuck Kyle, I am so excited to have you on the podcast today. Well, thank you, John. And, you know, we we go back a long time. So anytime you give me a call, we'll, we'll work this thing out, okay? I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, I used to call you on Sunday nights, and you were busy working on your, your lesson plans for Chaucer and, <laughs> and all these guys. Uh, Coach Kyle, everybody's read the papers. Every, most people that follow high school football know that this is you're going into your last year. You're retiring after this year. And uh, how many years have you been coaching in the game? Well, uh, according to my count, this will be my 50th year. Now, some people say 51st, but I I did help a little, but I'm not officially, you know. uh, uh, And and being the head coach. Oh, head coach, head coach. This will be my 39th year. And and I've been an assistant for 11 at all at St. Ignatius. Uh, so 50 years of coaching football. That's the way I look at it. I, whether I was the head coach or assistant, now come on, we're all out there in the practice and we're working hard. So, Right. Well, I, I think that tonight it's, and, you know, we talked off the air. I, you know, I don't want to get into your records and all this stuff. I do have a lot of pride that you're an English teacher or professor or educator. I like the word English and I, and that speaks so highly of you. You've talked about it before. Importance of English teacher. What's the importance of that class? Okay. First of all, we're in the 21st century and we are in the world of communication. Right. You can communicate to anybody in the world within seconds. That's where we are. And because of that, I I, I would say the word wording oneself is, is extremely important. Um, and, and, and so that comes, whether everybody has, if there's different languages, come on, the wording still comes down to expressing your ideas. Now I'm not getting philosophical, but that's important. The idea of communication and, and, uh, an English teacher, we, we, we spend a lot of time with ink all, all over our thumbs grading papers and making suggestions and making some corrections to make it a quality presentation. And I hope 
that a quality presentation of the written word will always uh, be in favor uh, of what, what takes place. So um, that's, that, that's what I signed up to do uh, 50 years ago. I, I, I enjoyed English. And so I uh, became an English teacher and I always just pictured myself being an English teacher and doing some coaching out there. Uh, I had no visions of grandeur, believe me, it was just, I had a lot of energy. So I was going to you know, teach my five classes, put a change clothes, put a whistle on and go out and, and have fun coaching. And, and that would be what I do. And I always try to try to keep reminding myself that's why I did this and what I really enjoy. That's super. Well, I guess tonight, and I look down at my notes and, and it's almost a threefold uh, interview with you. And the first one is me thanking you for all that you've done for me. We joked about it early and I, and I've said this written down and that you and you were one of the first guys at big St. Ignatius that said, Hey, this guy's legit. Right. You know, when I first started, I think Terry Forbes was doing it and he was the only guy I think, but I had to do something different. So I tried to see as many kids, but I thank you for getting me those uh, passes on a Wednesday or a Thursday and get up. I thank you for all that you've done for me on that. And I'm sure many, many people thank you just the same. Okay. And, and it's just true. And uh, set the game ahead and you've done such a great job. So from that point, thank you. Oh. Now let's talk about, and I want to congratulate you. And that's the second thing on your success on the success of St. Ignatius, uh, one of the more known schools in the country. So how do you, give me a brief, how did you, what was the keys to your success? Well, what's the, what's the mainstream? What's the keys to your success? Okay. Wow. I, I, Don't go too long. <laughs> I'm not going to go too long, so I'm going to, streamline but get right to the point when a young coach comes up and asks coach give me you know give me some nugget here of what's what what i should do as a coach i always stop with start with this one is that you want to make sure that that young person looking at you believes and trusts that you you as the coach really value trying to help him or her, that it's not worried about a record. It's not win, 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 win. It's uh, you watch the kid at practice and and you come up and you go, now son, you, you, what you're trying to do there, you know, your foot works off. If you just try to do get the foot right to this position and get your hip here, it'll work better. Try it. This is how you do it. Yeah. And when a kid starts doing that and starts realizing, whoa, yeah, that is better. I, I I can feel it. That kid will do anything on the football field if you tell them. They, they believe in you. They trust you. I always thought that's what a coach does. You know, that those are the the kids are playing the game. It's it's not all the you know strategy and schemes and everything that we do. Come right. on, we, we exchange films. Everybody knows what you're doing. It's it comes down to can that kid perform that 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 task and that technique and if that kid senses well oh, man this coach really goes out of his way to help me get better at what I'm doing those kids will go go to the length for you they'll believe in you and 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 that's what you need to win games that's good that's one of the keys or the biggest key I think it's the biggest key uh, um, they gotta you know, trust you and believe in you right I mean yeah. The kids, I mean, football is the most popular spectator sport in America by far. It's not even debatable. Right. It's just, you know, some kids may not believe, well, uh, is it worth the, the all the work you have to do? And it's so complex. Well, son, once you get into it, you'll you'll really enjoy it. Right. And, but somebody's got to guide them along, you know, and, and, and help at those little moments that make the kid a better player. And I believe in that. I, I that's, that's what I enjoy about coaching. Yeah. Like, you know, I coached track and field too for yeah. 
48 years, you know, now. And and it's technique stuff because, you know, hey, you get to a track meet, then you know what, coach, you go sit down in the stands and the kid has to do it, you know. All your work is done in track and field on uh, at the practice, you know, and okay, you know, pole vaulter, you got to get the hand here and you get, okay, the kid has a great day. You're sitting up in the crowd. You're not allowed to be out there. So yeah. it's, it's just, that's, that's coaching. That's really what it's about. It's really hard for me as a track coach to do that, by the way. Well, sure <laughs> it is. But it's more, and not so much working on little things at, at a competition, it's encouraging and things like that, I guess. Oh, it's, sure. Once okay. you get those kids into it, you know, they're still, I don't care. I don't care what age they are now. Once those kids get into it and they see themselves improving, they work hard. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's a, and they, the difference between loving a sport and liking a sport. And I'm sure you have both, but you have a lot of kids, I think on your team, especially seniors that love being there. And maybe love playing football, but they're not quite good enough to be a, a starter. And that's what, to me, you once told me, our, and you and Steve Speck both, of the number of kids you have, a lot of them want to be there, just be a part of it, love being a part of it. And I think that's huge. Right. Okay. What camaraderie, camaraderie. They'll, they'll know each other for, the, at the 50th reunion, they'll all be hanging around together, you know. That, that's what it's about. It reminds me of that. And uh, we're still Facebook friends and make comments every once in a while. Trent Zenkowitz. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I remember he was good. When he went to Michigan, he was good friends with Herc Wolf, who is a big Michigan supporter, a mile from where I live. And one Sunday afternoon in the offseason, Trent was down hunting. He and another guy were hunting on Herc's farm. And, and Trent remembered that three months, three or four months ago. I texted him about it. You know, that's a long time ago, Chuck. But that's the kind of guys that you have influenced, or hopefully, we have we as coaches have influenced. I but it's been part. Let's talk about let's talk about your season coming up, sure. in you know your your team just for a minute or two. Sure, sure. I um, we got. I think we're a good, solid team. Um, there, we're young in certain key areas, but it's a long season. And, you know, when you say lack of experience in certain areas, well, how many games do you need before you say that person's experienced? Okay? Right, right. And, and, and so that's patience and, and uh, working through some things. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the, uh, kind of the excitement about, a season like this, because you can see, you know, that there's kids that are really willing to work hard. And there's some talent. There's talent there. The kids, you know, it's just that it's a little raw right now. That's and uh, it has to be, you know, sort of tempered down to what, what's really needed and be efficient. But but that's where we're at. And But we, we come right out of the gate and we're playing Springfield, who's ranked, what, fourth in the state right now. One uh, Max Preps has a fourth in the state. So. We well, it's, it's the schedule is somewhat like the playoffs right away, and uh, but I can't get hung up about that, and I don't want the players to get hung up about yeah, that. It's just what can we control? Yeah. Let's get better each day, and then get out to the field and see how the ball bounces, right? And do well at what you can control. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, don't, like, don't worry about what you can't. Okay, yeah. how do you? Yankees, who cares? Just play. How do you approach the last? This last. Uh, season. How do you approach it, Chuck? Anything different? Oh, I, can't see, I can't see you changing. I can't see you even worried thinking about it or anything like that. Is that pretty much it? Well, I, I, I really feel I love, you know, I love the challenge of it each day and, and right. you know, you, you're sitting there going, okay, we're it's game week and okay, here's what they present and let's talk about adjusting the blocking scheme or some little different formation. We can get a little better leverage on the play, things like that. That's, that's, that's enjoyable. That's fun. Um, but as, as that's happening, I, I, I am, I, I don't want to be the guy say, Hey, we, I'm the head coach. We must do this. I, I, I don't want that, especially this year. I, I have the guys that are going to take over, 
you know, that this is it. They're, they're going to continue on and I want them to. And I am excited about the people that we uh, have doing it. Uh, I want them to create. I want them to get their juices flowing, you know, and, and, and get into it. And they are. Uh, I, I feel I'm there to go. Um, maybe against this, we, we can make this adjustment. Let's talk about that. Right. And I, I, I feel like I'm mentoring more That's than I've ever done. That's really super. That's, and you're a teacher, obviously. So you're that could right up in your field and a good teacher. That sounds really good. I, I would just a couple more things. One, I, I would be remiss if, and I've known some of your coaches over the years, but Nick Restifo has to be one of my favorite guys. He's, and he coached for you for a long time. And I, and I think the world of him and, uh, I'm sure he'd like to come back, but he's also making Italian food and Spanish food and all that stuff, I would yeah. guess. But I wanted to mention him because he would be the kind of guy who was instrumental in your program, right? I mean, there were, you had a couple of the coaches I used to see every year. Now mm -hmm. it's changed some, but I always thought Nick was uh, there all the time and stuff like that. Right. When, um when this is going back again, 39 years, 40 years ago. And, uh, you know, I was told by the administration, you're, you're the head coach now. You're, we, we, we'll, okay. So when I left the office uh, with that, I, I walked up two flights of stairs in the main building, walked into Nick's classroom and walked up to him and said, Nick, you want to be the offensive coordinator here at St. Ignatius <laughs> high school? And he said, sure. Uh, <laughs> You know, and that that was historically the first offensive coordinator uh, Ignatius had. It was always like somebody, the head coach would call the plays or something like that. But uh, you know, we we went to we went to college together, and, oh. and so you know we knew each other pretty well. And and uh, and he's a good football. You know, there are guys that are football guys. They just love it and love the whole approach to it. So that was within. I, I, I would have to say within 10 minutes that I, I, I got the head coaching job, within 10 minutes, we had our first offensive coordinator in the history of Ignatius. And that was yeah, Nick. And, cool. you know, he did it for, you know, 38 years, nine years, whatever it is. Yeah. So it's, it's been always a fun thing for us. Uh, you know, we worked, you know, well together. You know, I'd challenge him, he'd challenge me, but we'd always go, yeah, we get it. Okay, let's go. You know. Chuck, one. When did you start realizing this was probably retirement time? You know, when did you start realizing? I always worried about worry about people. Myself, anything I do, even in this football business, I still don't want to be hanging on. Right. I still don't want to be. <laughs> there's old. I mean, people probably think that, but I'm a young seventy four, by the way, mm -hmm. and. Uh, when did you get that feeling that this might be a, can you well, say, or just for people out there, I guess. Well, basically, you know, I, I, I've been a guy for how many years and whether this is right or wrong, it's almost like, well, okay. I, I, I like with blinders on almost just, just going, okay, yeah. I'm on a move. You know, here I go. It, it, what month is it? Well, it's, it, it, it's, um, it's August. Uh, okay. Football practice starts. I'm focused on football practice. It's now, uh, you know, September. It's the games and uh, football season ends. And then, okay, uh, it must be December and January. I got to off season and get track going. And, and, and I've, I've lived my life kind of that way, whether it's right or wrong. That's, right. that's what I do. And it's just, just this banging through and banging through. So in all honesty, John, I, I, I you, I, all along, I, I said to administrators and and uh, 80s, look, you, 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 when you guys feel that maybe I should talk to you guys about change, you know, moving away or doing a long, please just go ahead and tell me because yeah. I'm, 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 I got my blinders on. I'm just doing yeah. my work and I'm going to go, go, go. And I'm healthy and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, um, it was certainly more than a year ago that, that a conversation started going, you know, coach, you're 71 years old. You've been here for, you know, 
50 years. We don't have a pay scale or anything. We've never had this before. Yeah. Um, can we talk about, and they felt like we need to know, we need yeah. to know, uh, because this thing has become, you know, bigger than just, yeah. it's become big. Yeah. We need to know, you know, are you, when are you going to retire? I mean, what are you thinking? Yeah. So it, it, with that statement, it, it wasn't, I, I didn't want it to go hurt my pride by saying that I, yeah. I, I've invited that. Yeah. So it's time to talk and it was time to talk and just work things out. And I just wanted to make sure uh, that it's, it's the right guy that's going to move in right. and the right people and the way the program has been uh, yeah. that, that, you know, there's a lot of faith based ba involved in this and, and to be honest with you. And so um, the conversation was going on actually um, a year and a half ago and, okay. and I understood what they were saying, you know, and I didn't want, well, I can do this forever. And uh, come on, let's not be that selfish, you know, don't be that selfish. And so um, we, 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 as we talked, we came to a really clear idea that let, let me mentor uh, attract too. I, I did the same thing. And, and I have some great, great young people who love the sport. Both of them, they love the sport. They're going to put the time in and the kids really enjoy working with them. And at that point I'm going, I, I couldn't, do, I couldn't walk away from it any better than who the people I have, I have coming up. So that's good. That's what should happen. Okay. Well, coach, thank you. I have just one more last question. Uh, are you going to stay involved with the Cleveland Browns in? Yes. I, oh, I got, I got the shirt on. Here I am. Uh, I, I feel bad for you because it's one of the few things I've ever really been concerned about, you know, with being a Cleveland Browns guy like that. I, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe you like the Bengals, you know, but <laughs> I'm just joking around, but you're going to stay with that. Right. That's right. Good. I'm, I'm doing work with, with the youth programs. Uh, and, and, uh, they, I'm called the youth advisor and uh, in talking to the leagues and, and I'm really involved with all the leagues and just getting their feedback. And I can tell you, John, in Northeast Ohio, the numbers have been going up and up and up with kids getting back into the game. And my job is to help young coaches understand that you, you don't coach it like you did 20 years ago. Right. It, it, there's, let's talk about contact and it's been researched way more than it ever was before. And, and uh, let's handle kids the way we should. And, and, and so uh, I find that uh, a, a great way of staying with the game and, and hopefully uh, perpetuating the game. Okay. Because they, it's needed. It's For needed sure. more than ever now. It really is. Coach Kyle, I, my last thing, I told you there were three, my last, comment would be i wish you the very very best i'm sure we'll cross paths on sure. purpose but i wish you the very best to the rest of the season i will be up at a game i will call you probably wednesday and say hey chuck i've changed my plans anyway i can get a pass yeah, and you'll well, say, yeah i'll see what i can do and you do that so mm -hmm. but i will see a game and i'm also i don't know i i'm i'm sure you're looking forward to that last game of the season and uh, playing right there at St. Ignatius. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. I don't know how they're going to get this thing all set up. I really yeah. don't. But, you know, <laughs> it, it, I just go, all right, do okay. how, however you want. I'm concentrating on the team we're playing, okay? And then we'll go from there. All right. Coach Chuck Kyle, thank you very much for being sure. on the podcast. Anytime. A lot of I fun. Thank you. You got it.